Hey guys, this is Rodesk and I'm coming back to you with the detailing part of the hard surface tutorial inside of ZBrush and what I did to get uh, hard surface details onto my armor. Um, so I answered this question in the last video that I made, but um, it was in a comment. Um, so I thought that maybe I should actually just elaborate a little bit more as to what I did for the detailing. So if you guys haven't watched the first video, I'll leave a link in the description or in the comment section, um, how you can get to the first one. Um, but essentially what you're going to want to do, um, after you get your panels and you move them into place. And I also had a comment, um, someone said that retopo is faster, uh, than the method that I showed before. And to be frank, yes, it is. It is faster, but for somebody who doesn't know edge flow, who doesn't know how to put proper topology down to hold up the edges, uh, retopologizing can be not so good. Um, it gives you better results uh, in terms of like how close the panels are and how accurate the panels fit together. But at the end of the day, when somebody doesn't know how to do edge flow or how to do that specific workflow, it makes it much harder. And this method for me is easier because I just have to do what I do naturally, which is just sculpt. So uh, in, in, in essence, yes it is, but no it really isn't because if you're a digital sculptor, you don't really know how to do that. Uh, but for somebody who knows how to digital sculpt or excuse me, who knows hard surface modeling and who knows how to retopologize and, you know, make all of the edges not crinkled together and whatever, when you start to subdivide, then yeah, go for it. That's, that's perfectly fine. But again, um, I'm not that. So this is what I do and hopefully it's helping other people who are doing the same thing. All right. So right now we're just going to go over some techniques as to how I added the, um, the details into my armor. Uh, so we're just going to pick a piece and we're just going to work with that because I don't want to go through the whole panel um, thing again. So I'm just going to go with her uh, thing right here. So as you can see, we do have back pieces to this. Uh, and ideally, you don't want to have like inside geometry. If you, you know, you don't like you can see down here, it says 65 million uh, polys. That's bad. Like you don't want that many. So maybe what you want to do is you want to do a panel loop um, instead, which will and take off double, which will just kind of do the same thing as what we're doing with the dynamic thickness, but it'll leave out the back part. And I really wish that in the future, when um, Pixel Logic uh, does an update, that they can maybe find a way to only just thicken the sides of the model rather than thickening thickening the entire thing, because that'll really help with game artists. Um, in reducing their poly count. Um, but we're going to choose this piece real quick. And we're just going to kind of work off of this. So I'm going to actually make this its own mesh. And I'm, I usually, when I do work with subdivs inside of um, Pix, uh, a ZBrush, I usually just say always on because I'm always using this. And we're just going to set up the same um, things that we did. So this will be a crease level of two with a uh, with a uh, dynamic subdiv of four, okay? And we're also gonna give it just a little bit of thickness, okay? All right, so once we've done this, we're just going to apply it. That's going to add a lot more geometry to it, so maybe you wanna be careful about this, all right? And then what we can do is once we've done that, we can go up to our standard brush and we can make sure that it's in drag rectangle. And now we can start using some alphas um, on our mesh that are gonna help us. You can also do a little bit more cleanup. So maybe just drop down the, the polygon count. What is going on here? Uh, okay. <laughs> are we in dynamic mode? I, I don't know what's going on. Why didn't it work? That's so weird. Okay, let's drop this back a little bit. Whoa, is that a glitch? Thickness. Subdivs of four, maybe three. What? That's so weird. That's really... That's really weird. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't do it. Okay. 
Why that? Oh, there we go. That was weird. Anyways. Um, again, if you want to actually kind of polish this down and make, make the, uh, the stuff less bumpy, what I like to do is I kind of like to polish by features this. So I'll kind of like go into like a subdiv of two and kind of just go in here and like maybe polish these a bit. Uh, you can also, if you just want to polish the inner part and you don't want to mess up the borders, you can actually just go to your masking um, and then mask by border. And then what you can do is you can do a polish by features on that. And that'll kind of, that'll kind of polish this down a bit and help you out. I also have my uh, waiting mode um, and my poly paint mode um, in my actual menu, but you can find those in your uh, brush menu, holding down shift, go into your brush menu, menu, and then you can go into your smooth brush modifiers. And if you want your poly painting, you can go into your, uh, where is it? Alpha and texture, and here's your poly paint mode, all right? So we're just gonna slide this to six, and this is going to um, respect the the groups when I start to use this. And again, this is for if you don't want the uh, groups to be diminished when you're smoothing it down. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like. So if we're, if we're doing this mode, you can see that it's not too bad. You know, we're actually kind of smoothing it down and kind of uh, giving it a little bit more kind of like less or less dense, right? Um, and, but if you use the regular mode, you'll see that those creases leave and the edge kind of diminish um, as opposed to uh, using groups mode where if you start to smoothen the edge, you can see that all, it's, it's kind of respecting the edges a little bit better, right? So that's, uh, that's kind of perfect for if you're doing like hard surface and you're kind of wanting to get like these, you know, nice edges and everything. You kind of just want to go in here and polish this up a bit. Uh, use uh, polish by features or whatever you need to do, right? So we're just going to kind of go in here and kind of clean it up a little bit more. Not spend too much time on it. Just up to a point where you're kind of like happy with it. And then what you're going to want to do is using your using your smooth brush. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm all the way at the highest subdivisions. You're going to turn this to about, I don't know, 60, 65, just so you can get kind of like better, uh, quicker shapes. <clears throat> and then what you could do is ZBrush actually Im implemented these new um, alphas hard surface alphas inside of ZBrush that you can use now. And I like to use these in interesting ways. So the alphas themselves are very interesting, um, shaped and everything. Uh, but maybe you can also use masking with this. So we can sit here and we can go in here to our, uh, let's choose that other one again. Where is it? There it is. So we could choose like a couple of these. So maybe we're gonna use this one, double click on it, use this one. Uh, maybe we're going to use this one. Um, maybe we'll also use this one. Double click on it a few times. Um, and I think that's good. All right. So what you could then, what you can then do is like, we can go into our masking, we can go to curve and then maybe we can actually kind of like, I don't know, mask out like an area here. Let me actually add a little bit more resolution to this. Maybe we can mask out an area and then we can drag our, uh, alpha, but as you can see, it's kind of got this like fall off, which we don't really want. So we're going to change our focal shift all the way to negative zero so that we're just getting the alpha shape. Um, now we can drag it out and we can get some more interesting kind of shapes with our alpha. So we can go in here like this. And, and then what you can do is you can kind of like smoothen this down, make sure we're in our regular smooth mode and kind of just like smooth that down a bit. And you can get some interesting shapes. Obviously, this is a little bit too high. So what I like to do is I also like to store a, a layer. So you can actually use a layer for this. And then we can go in here and we can maybe go like this. Maybe we want like something that's, I don't know, kind of like this shape. 
and then we can kind of smoothen it down and then you can kind of like with your layer you can kind of just like push it down a little bit more I don't know something or you can even indent it um, but this is really good for just kind of like uh, you know um, sketching and trying to figure out what you want to do with the with the mesh okay so essentially this is all I do is I just kind of like go in here um, and if you don't like that you can actually just delete it add a new one on here you can go into here and you can just kind of like start to play around with this so maybe I kind of want this to be that again it's a little too deep but that's why our layer is there and we can kind of just like do this and this is going to ensure that all of them are the same like spacing or excuse me the same um, depth so that we're not kind of overdoing it and then we can kind of go in here and um, smoothen it down make a new layer smoothen it down a little bit and there you go we have like some cool alphas you can also use your clip brush to kind of clip in some kind of like I don't know um, designs just like this uh, actually, you know what? Maybe we can actually use our. Maybe we can actually use this as well. Invert that. Oops. Uh, let's use this. Let's see if this will work. I don't know. Something like that, maybe. Again, make a new layer so we're not ruining that. Let's try to. Let's try to do this. Let's try to actually make like a, a little thing right there and then not worry about too much about that. All right. <clears throat> so I wonder if this will work a little bit better. Just trying to get this kind of like little notch in there as best as I can. I don't know, something that kind of like stands out and like goes, uh, makes your eye go, oh yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty cool looking. Um, or maybe we can actually go in here and um, use the Damien standard and hold down shift and just kind of make some some interesting kind of like panel designs like this. It's all about just kind of like at this point, like, you, you know, using your imagination to get what you need from this. All right, so that's essentially what you're going to do. You're just going to use alphas, and you're going to start kind of making that. Now, you can do all of this stuff inside of uh, Substance Painter. You don't have to um, you don't have to make this inside of here. You can make this inside of Substance Painter with the, or excuse me, Substance 3D Painter uh, with their new tools that they have, like the auto curvature, you know, ambient occlusion, and stuff like that. You can get all of that stuff inside of Substance Painter, so you don't necessarily need to sculpt this inside of here. Um, you can use their alphas inside of Substance Painter if you're making this into a game-ready mesh. But, of course, if you're just sculpting it and you want a nice high-res sculpt, um, then you would go in here and you would just kind of use the, the method. And you can also use Booleans as well. There's nothing against Booleans here, so you can append a cylinder. And maybe you want to, I don't know, do something interesting with that. Maybe you can get a better design. Um, and you can use Booleans. So we can go in here, go into this, this, and now we have our cylinder uh, shape in here, and it's a little bit cleaner. The only problem is, is the really harsh um, edges. Uh, and I like to actually, again, use my um, crease 45 with uh, this. So I put that in my menu, and now we have um, a Boolean piece that isn't um, necessarily actually there. So a little non-destructive workflow going on there. But yeah, essentially now we have the ability to cut into our stuff. So there's endless possibilities of doing this. You don't necessarily have to do, uh, you know, modeling. You can just sculpt it in there. All right. So this has been Rodesca. I really hope this has helped you out with your stuff. Please leave a like and please uh, subscribe if uh, this has helped you. All right. Thank you guys so much. Take care.